Hello friends, this video on morphology of flowering plants part 19 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we end our discussion on leaf. The next organ which we will talk about or the next part of the plant that we, we are going to talk about is flower. Flower, something which we all know. I mean, I don't need, really need to explain to you what is a flower. We all know what it is. But now that when we will be studying about flower in detail, you will actually get to know how important a flower is for the survival of a plant. So with this thought in mind, let us see what is a flower. So flower is the reproductive organ of the plant. So we can say that leaves were the ones who prepare food for the plant. Right? Now with the food, what will the plant do? The plant will be able to survive. So the plant will live. But a day will come when the plant will grow too old and the plant has to die. Now if there is no reproduction, then what will happen? All the plants will end up. There will be no plant left over on this earth. Correct? So there has to be reproduction. Now how will that reproduction happen? With the help of some reproductive organs present in the plant. So flower is that reproductive organ of the plant which actually helps in producing similar plants over and over again. Flower is nothing but a modified shoot. So a shoot gets modified like how we were talking about leaves that leaves get modified to form spines in case of cactus. Similarly, flower is nothing but a modification of the shoot. So basically, if you see, this is the stem of the plant, the entire shoot system, right? So this shoot itself gets modified to form a flower. So flower is a modified shoot. This is something very, very important to remember and to note. So before we talk about the structure of a flower or the parts of a flower or the types of flower, the first thing that we are going to talk about is inflorescence. How are the flowers arranged on a stem or how are the flowers arranged in a plant? So that is known as inflorescence. So let us first talk about that. So inflorescence will talk about the arrangement of flowers on floral axis. Like how we talked about phyllotaxy, that is arrangement of leaves on the stem. So here we will see how flowers are arranged on the floral axis, that is on the axis which carries the flowers. Now again, inflorescence also have, is of two types, based on whether the main axis or the floral axis which we are talking about always keeps growing or it has a limited growth. Now in one type of inflorescence, the main axis will keep on growing forever and in the other type of inflorescence, it will have a limited growth. So, inflorescence basically comes into picture only when a floral axis bears cluster of flowers. So, it will not come into picture when one floral axis has only one flower. It comes into picture only when one floral axis has a bunch of flowers. So, in case there is one flower on a floral axis that is known as a solitary flower. But when we have bunch of flowers, then we talk about inflorescence. Right? So what are the types of inflorescence? Racemos and cymos. So racemos and cymos are the two types of inflorescence. So let us discuss about each of these types of inflorescence. First we will talk about racemos inflorescence. So what happens in racemos inflorescence? Here flowers are arranged acropatal. So what do we mean by acropatal? What is acropatal? It means the lower flowers are older than the upper flowers. That means the flowers which already exist, they are at the bottom. The new flowers which are formed later, they are formed at the top. So in this case, the main axis continues to grow. So which is the main axis here? This is the main axis. So this axis will keep on growing forever and how the plants will be formed, the, fl the flowers which are formed before will be lower, then the flowers which are formed later will be at the upper. So that means when I say acropetal, that means the youngest flower is at the top because 
flowers which are formed before are at the bottom newer flowers will add up to the top again newer flowers will add up to the top so what will happen the flowers which are at the top they are the youngest flowers right so some of the so here the main axis continues to grow because the main axis will never bear a flower i mean it, it will not terminate into a flower that flowers will always be arranged somewhere here and there on the main axis let us look at some of the examples of the racimos arrangement it is something like this if this is my floral axis you can have flowers in this fashion that means this is the oldest these are the newer ones so the ones which are at the top are the newest flowers this is one example of racimos inflorescence another example could be something like this this is the floral axis you have a branch here and which again bears flowers you have another branch here in which again bears flowers you have another branch here which bears flowers another branch here which has flowers so this is also an example of racimos arrangement because the main axis will continue to grow here because the main axis is not I mean perturbed with the formation of so many flowers. Again, there could be another formation where you actually have a very, I mean the main axis is not very long, the main axis is small, but the flowers which are formed are somewhat like this. I mean these axes are like very long axis. So the flowers actually are no longer than the main axis. So this, these are all here, in this case the main axis is short. So these are some of the yeah, uh, examples of racimos inflorescence. This is how racimos inflorescence look like. Let us now see what is cymos inflorescence. Here the main axis terminates in a flower. So the main axis itself, see this was the main axis, right? So the main axis ended up in a flower. That means it cannot grow any further. So the, it has limited growth. The main axis has limited growth. Axial branches continue to grow. So even though the main axis cannot grow, that means it will not have a, a very, the main axis will not be very high. However, the lateral branches which bear flowers, they can continue to grow. So it will spread laterally. So in this case, what will happen? The youngest flower, where will be the youngest flower? The youngest flower is at the bottom. How? That is because this portion, that is the main axis will not grow, but the lateral axis or the sideways axis will keep on growing. So when they keep on growing at the end, it will happen that the main axis, the flower which was there at the tip, that remained at the bottom and all other flowers actually went up. So therefore, the youngest flower which is formed is basically formed at the bottom. So some of the examples of Simo's arrangement would be somewhat like this. Let us suppose this is the main axis. It terminated in a flower like this. But the lateral branch can grow. The lateral branch can continue to grow like this. So this can actually have flowers. Again, there can be an arrangement like this. Like this is the main axis which terminated in a flower. There is another axis which terminated in a flower. Again, this is terminated in a flower. Again, from here another one which terminated in a flower and so on. So this is also an example of a cyanose inflorescence. Another example could also be like this. Here you have the main axis with a flower. Here is another axis with a flower. Here another axis with a flower. Here another axis with a flower. Here again you have another axis with a flower. Here another axis with a flower. Similarly on this side also you can have the same thing. So these are examples of cymos inflorescence. So I hope the cymos and racimos inflorescence are clear to you. Okay. So now let us have a quick distinction between racimos and cymos. So the first and the basic difference is that in racimos the main axis continues to grow but in cymos the main axis terminates in a flower. Therefore it has a limited growth. In racimos indefinite number of flowers are present 
whereas in cymos definite numbers of flowers because in cymos the main axis the axis can only terminate in one flower so you just cannot have bunch of flowers together right so the number of flowers will always be definite in cymos but in racemos there is nothing like that in racemos flowers are arranged in acropetal fashion that is the youngest at the top whereas in cymos the flowers are arranged in basipetal fashion that is the youngest at the bottom basipetal is derived from the word base base that is bottom so the youngest flower will be at the bottom in this case whereas in racemos it is in acropetal fashion so the youngest flower will be at the top so this is the difference between racemos and cymos in florescence so with this we will end our discussion on uh, inflorescence and now we will start talking about the structure of flower thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again